Hi everyone, I'm Jane and today we're going to paint this misty autumn sunrise. Before we begin, make sure you hit that subscribe button so that you can paint with me every week and then check out the video description below for a full list of materials. Now let's get started. All right, today per the usual, I'm starting with a 12 by 16 inch Frederick's Red Label stretched canvas. This is fresh out of the package. I have not prepared it in any way at all. To start, we're gonna cover the background with a sunset or a sunrise, however you choose to look at it. And to do so, I'm gonna use my one inch flat brush and wet it in my jar and wipe it on the edge pretty good. Now, if you feel like you have a hard time blending paint that it dries really quick on you, just take a little spray bottle of water and mist down the back of the canvas. Don't wet it so much that there's water running out everywhere just a little bit across the back. That little bit of moisture will help the paint stay open a tiny bit longer on the front. I didn't spray mine on the back because I don't have a problem blending. I know how long it takes my paint to dry. On my plate, I have yellow oxide, diox purple, and burnt umber. And I'm really just gonna kind of use a mixture of all of them along with titanium white. I'm gonna start up in this area, which is gonna be the lightest. So I'm just gonna pull out a little bit of the purple and brown just a bit and some yellow. I want it to be more on the yellow side than on the purple brown side, but I don't have a ton of that paint on my brush because I'm gonna get some white. I'm gonna keep it nice and light up here. Right about here is where I know I want it to be the lightest. So I'm gonna start right there. Just lay that in there. Let's pick up a little more paint so we can cover a larger area. All right. Just a little back and forth. You can even do this with the cloud brushes if you like. You know, like the little smoky, smoky scrub technique that we do sometimes. Let's go a little bit darker. So I'm gonna pick up the same colors, but I'm not gonna pick up any extra white. There's still some white on my brush. I'm gonna start just below and work up into that previous color. I'm not looking for a real perfect blend or transition of color. You know, if this is a, a cloudy, stormy sky, there'd be a little bit of variation in the color hint of white. Let your color mixture be different every time you go back for more paint. Don't worry about getting the exact same color mixture every time. Lighten that pressure to blend it in there. See up on the toe of the brush. Picked up just a little extra water. That was a bit much white. There we go. See, just kind of jumping around, letting these colors do their thing. I love this kind of dusty dusty sunrise color. That's what it looks like to me as a sunrise. Looks like early morning, maybe you're up in the mountains. It's a little bit foggy, misty. Exactly the type of place that I would love to be right now. Maybe it's getting a little too cold for camping, but you're doing it anyway. That's what this feels like to me. All right, now we're starting to get down to the lower half of the canvas. So I am gonna make it a bit darker. Then I can pick up a little bit more purple and brown. Don't worry if your colors lean more toward the purple or the brown if they're not the exact same as mine. A 
Remember, heavy pressure lays paint down. Tiptoe pressure blends them together. Heavy pressure, tiptoe. All right, and darker still, more brown purple, more yellow. This, I believe, is the, this is gonna be the most challenging part of the whole painting is doing this background. I think this is a pretty simple painting. Okay, I'm gonna go to my half inch flat brush and I wet it in my jar a bit. I'm gonna pick up a good amount of brown and purple, maybe just a little bit more purple than brown. And I might throw just a hint of yellow in there just cause it kind of makes the color a little bit richer, but I'm not gonna pick up any white. The yellow lightens this color a bit. I'm gonna start laying it down here just like I did with the, with the one inch brush. Just kind of preparing this area. This painting is actually based on several images. There's an image off of Pixabay that kind of gave me the, the idea for the flowers and the spider web. I liked that. But the orientation and the color and the light and everything is actually from a photograph that my mom took. I believe in Ireland, and I can't show you that one because she's on vacation again. She goes on vacation a lot, lucky. And so I don't have access to the picture, but the light, it's, it's got that misty quality that I was really going for in this painting. All right, same color. And I'm gonna do the little dabbing motion that I do kind of scribbly using the corner of my brush. So corner my brush, kind of start right there where that dark color is and dab it up. Let it just kind of disappear. See how light my pressure is? I'm not crushing the tip onto the canvas all that often. Sometimes I do if I want to lay down a good amount of paint, but then as I blend up, see, it's really just this light kind of scratching pressure. And that first layer of color is still wet, so it's blending in there nicely, which is good because that's gonna help me get kind of that fractured look to say these are some very distant trees. Take some of them up quite a bit higher than others. Don't make everything the same height. That looks really stiff and awkward when everything's the same height. We'll make it just a little bit taller on this side than on the other side. If your background already dried, that's not a big deal. Just focus on using light pressure and you shouldn't have an issue. You could also use a little bit of matte medium here if you like, if your background is dry. And what that will do is make this color that we're putting on just a little bit more transparent so that you, know, you can kind of see through it to the colors underneath and then it will look like it's blended in even though it's not, it's just laying on top. And let's fill in the bottom, purple and brown, and I got a little bit of Mars Black. I'm gonna grab some of that. And I'm just gonna fill in the very bottom here. So it's not pure black, but it's approaching pure black. 
blend it up into that color. See, if I spread it really thin, you can see that it's still kind of purpley. And it may look totally black, you know, right now as I'm applying it, but when I put the actual black on top of it, you know, the solid black from the flowers in a little bit, you should still be able to see that just a little bit where it overlaps this color because the colors are a bit different. So there's our background. Now I'm gonna add our sun, our rising sun, and I'm gonna put it right about in here. And this is gonna be a very similar technique to the way we did the moon in Haunted Moon Glow. And I'm gonna use my half an inch filbert, and I wet it in my jar, and I'm gonna grab just a little bit of white, not a ton of paint, just a little poke of white. I also have a little bit of matte medium here because I like the way that matte medium helps me kind of blend this out. If you feel comfortable doing it without matte medium, that's perfectly fine. So I'm gonna start right here, right about where I want the sun to be, and just start kind of dabbing a little circle in. I'm not going for a real solid, perfect shape here. And it's okay if this background is still wet. Mine is dry, but if yours is still wet, that's okay. Now I'm gonna get a little dab of matte medium and only matte medium. And what that's gonna do is help make this white a little more transparent. It helps me take the white out a little bit farther and again, makes it look like it's blending in with this background, even though it's not because this background is dry. Little matte medium again. And I'm just gonna keep going with matte medium until those edges are completely blurred out till I can't see them anymore. Super light pressure. I think I'm actually gonna grab just a tiny little poke of this yellow oxide. Just brighten that color a little tiny bit. So it's not pure white in the middle here anyway. There we go. All right, I'm gonna let that dry for a bit before I move on because I want to punch a final bright highlight right in the center of that sun. But the paint is kind of thick right now and I'm afraid that I'll start lifting it. So I'm probably gonna get out my blow dryer, make sure the center of that sun is nice and dry and then we'll move on. All right, just a little poke of white right in the center. Dust out any hard lines. Make it as bright or as you know moody and misty as you want. There we go. I'm 
I'm using super light pressure. All right, let's go ahead and start doing our flowers. Now remember these are dry, end of the season flowers. So they might be very twisty, they might be really spiky looking. So don't worry about your lines being straight or even or anything. So I'm gonna use my half inch bright to draw the stems. And the reason I'm using this one and not my angle is because I feel like the angle, I can get much smoother lines. The bright, I can get a little bit more twisty, jaggedy lines without having to work for it. So that's why I'm using my bright. You could use an angle brush or a round brush if you like. All right, I wet it in my jar and I'm just gonna get some black, just black paint. So I'm gonna start at the bottom. I'm just gonna use the tip of my brush and I'm gonna bring it up, keeping in mind where my sun is. I'm kinda of letting my hand wiggle a little bit so that the stem isn't perfectly straight. And I'll have it kinda of turn that way and we'll have a flower there. And then another one. Maybe right there. If my stem, if the shape of it gets away from me, you know, if I get a bristle that kind of pokes out someplace, I'm just gonna let that happen because it might look like a little twisty leaf or something or I can cover it with a little twisty leaf later. All right, some more. I'm gonna put another one here, keeping in mind where I want my spider web. I want my spider web to go over top of the sun. So I'm gonna start up here and let it wiggle a bit and down there. Widen that out just a little there. Maybe I'll have another one that comes off over here. And that kind of looks symmetrical to the other side. So I'll just pull another one, maybe a smaller flower right there. And now they don't look perfectly symmetrical. We'll even bring this one up just a little higher. All right, I'm going to my number six round brush and some black. Again, I did wet this brush in the jar and I'm gonna make some really dry, twisty leaves. So we'll zoom you in there so you can see how I'm doing the leaves. Very similar to the way I did the hanging leaves in the moon glow painting. I'm gonna start right here on my stem, just somewhere, it doesn't matter where. I'm gonna kind of push my brush almost flat, about halfway bend, pull it out, kind of twist it a little bit just like that. Maybe let's do another one right here. So again, kind of push a bit, twist my brush a little, let that end kind of jag out a bit. Put as many of these leaves as you want on here. I'll just do like a little one there. Okay, not too bad. Let's go ahead and start doing our flowers. These flowers are gonna be very simple. Please don't overthink them. I'm gonna stick with my number six round and black paint. So at the top of one of my stems, I'm just gonna kind of start flicking these little shapes. So maybe it kind of looks like a little old thistle or something, just some kind of a dried up flower. Make it as big or as little as you want. It'll kind of make each one a little bit different. I'm blending it with the stem just a little bit and then kind of flicking it out from there just so it doesn't look like a, like a puff ball kind of stuck onto a stem. <laughs> so it actually looks like it's growing on the stem or that it did grow on the stem. We'll do a smaller one here maybe.
I always think that flowers are so interesting looking in the fall, you know, when they go to seed and something that, you know, a few weeks ago was a soft flower and probably a soft colorful flower is now kind of a, a spiky seed pod. That's really interesting to me. And I love to stop and look at plants when I'm, you know, white, walking or hiking and kind of notice the way that things have changed. I think right here I'll have a nice large flower. Not crazy larger than everything else, just maybe a little bit. Very light pressure here, just using the very tip of the brush. All right, before we move on to the spider web, I'm gonna get out my blow dryer and make sure that this is completely dry because I'm gonna be using a black chalk pencil. And if this paint is even just just slightly damp, you know, where you can touch it and your fingers stick to the canvas, then I will have a, an impossible time getting this off of the canvas later. So we wanna make sure this is completely dry before we add the chalk pencil. All right, my canvas is good and dry now and ready for me to sketch on the spider web. So I'm gonna use my black charcoal pencil and I've sharpened it to a nice sharp point. You might wanna use a different color. I'm using black because I know you'll be able to see it. So look at a lot of pictures online of different spider webs to get an idea of how you want your spider web to look. Hopefully you can see that. Once I start filling it in, you'll be able to see a little bit better. All spider webs look different and you know, you can add to it and take away from it. So I just kind of put the top and the bottom lines on there. Now for the center, I'm gonna start with just kind of a almost like a little scribble mark. Let me show you on this piece of paper how I did that center because I know you can't see that real well. So basically, rather than making it very specific and perfect, I just kind of, just kind of like that. Just start the center off like that. And now from there, we can start taking out the edges. Don't make everything perfectly straight. You can make things uneven. Just these little pie-shaped wedges there. And remember, this is just the chalk, so it's not set in stone here. When you come in to use the paint, you don't have to go over all of these lines. You can change them then too. I think that's kind of a good start. And then I'm just gonna generally indicate to myself where the, the other little lines are gonna be. See, they're not, they're not gonna be real perfect and specific. Just sketch them on there and change them up however I like once I start painting it. So your spider web really can look like anything you like. I'm gonna make like a little hangy bit here. 
Maybe another one right here, just kind of straight down. And attach it, maybe right there. Let's pull this out a little bit farther. There we go. I should be able to erase that. Yeah, not too bad because I made sure that that paint was completely dry. I think this is all a good place to start. Once I start actually painting in the spider web, I can add little bits as I go. Now to paint in the spider web, you can use a long liner, which is what I'm gonna use, or a short liner. Use whatever you are most comfortable with. And I just happen to be most comfortable with my long liner. So I'm gonna get a good amount of water, pull out a little bit of black, and mix it in there, get a nice thin paint. You could also use soft body paint if you like. Roll it so I get a nice sharp point. And I'm gonna come in here and let's start with the center. I'm just gonna, same type of thing, just kind of sketching that center shape. See, it's nice and messy. And then from there, I can come out And see, my line is a little bit wobbly, and I'm okay with that. And if you flick it and, you know, it kind of gets outside of your line or pokes out somewhere that you didn't plan for it to poke out, that's okay. And that's going to happen to me here in a little bit. And when it does, I will either decide to just leave it or I can make another little bit of a spider web that's kind of coming off of that area. Very light pressure. So I can get a nice thin line. And my line doesn't even have to be fully formed if it kind of breaks up and disappears in a spot. That's okay because, you know, spider webs are very ethereal and very delicate and so you might not be able to see all of it if you're looking at a spider web particularly if it's backlit like this the way we've got the sun behind it and we'll kind of do these top and bottom areas here. See my line got a little wobbly there and I'm not gonna worry about it. Now the interior, I'm not even gonna take that much care. I'm just gonna kind of start, kind of swoop them, let them break up as they want to. Right here, can you see the way I swooped it quickly? It didn't all connect, it kind of bent upward. So I'm gonna take advantage of that and say, okay, maybe there's another little piece of a web here. So you can make all kinds of changes as you go. Depending on how old the spider web is, maybe pieces of it have, you know, fallen apart or and the wind blowing or bugs getting caught in them or, or whatever. And a little polka dot there that I don't like. I can just add a little extra bit of web or when we do the dew drops in a little bit, I can cover up little bits that I don't like with my dew drops. Just enjoy this part, you know, please don't, please don't judge your spider web.
take advantage of you know little things that you perceive to be mistakes in it and let those help the spider web kind of evolve and you know change it doesn't have to be this perfect thing i think very few spider webs are you know very perfect a lot of them have bits that are falling out or broken or shaped different than everything else Now that we've got the main part of the spider web done, we can kind of play with the other little elements. I'm going to take this and swoop it down a bit. Wherever you feel like it might look interesting if you elaborated on the shape of the spider web, do so. Maybe right in here, even have another little, just a little one. Let's start doing the little dew drops. Now you can do the dew drops many ways. If you want smaller ones, you can use the same brush. Just kind of come in and you know touch little circles along the lines. Kind of space them out. Don't make them all exactly the same shape or size or placement. Or you can take the end of your brush if you want ones that are just a little bit larger and come in and do that. Put as many on as you want. If you just want to do a few little ones, if you want to do a ton of them and really cover the spider web, Whatever you want to do. Especially down here. I like these little hangy bits. So I'm going to make sure that I get some spider webs on them. There's some little dew drops on them so that we can really show them off. These are just going to be very simple dewdrops because, you know, the background is just very dark. So I'm going to say that the dewdrops are very dark and then they've just got one little point of light showing through them from the, the rising sun. I'm just kind of going back and forth with the, the end of my brush and the bristles. Whatever I feel like is going to give me the shape and size that I need for that area.
sometimes when I do really repetitive things like this, especially when I'm doing it for a video, I get, I get impatient and, you know, I don't do as many as I would really like to have because I think, okay, that's boring enough. <laughs> Let's move on. So I'm trying really hard to, you know, just let myself find a happy place in the little repetitive motion and shapes and just keep doing it. You know, a lot of you have patience that is really mind blowing to me. I see some of the things that you do and I think, God, I don't have the patience for that. Let's put kind of a large one, maybe right here on the inside. I'll say that one's really going to be reflecting the sun. It's nice and big. All right, now I'm going to let this dry really, really well so that I can come put the highlights on the, on the dew drops and it won't mix with that black. All right, those are dry. I'm still using my long liner. I'm just gonna dip into the white and then pretty much right in the center of each shape, I'm gonna do kind of a highlight. The smaller the, the smaller the drop is, the smaller the highlight will be on it. And I can even kind of say that there's a, a little drip somewhere where I don't actually, where I didn't actually place one. I'll just put a tiny little poke of white right there. So it's really just the kind of the larger ones that have the black. So I'm just going to zoom you out there. While I go and do all these little dew drops so you can kind of see how they work together, how it changes just from adding that little bit of white. Now I know that when you're doing these dew drops yourself, when you're standing in front of them, it looks, it looks strange, you know, putting a little tiny white polka dot inside of a black dot. You think that doesn't really look like a dew drop, but I think once you stand back from it, you know, look at it from a distance, like I always tell you is so important, then I think you'll start to see it as a dew drop. also get nervous when I do really repetitive things because I think, oh, they're going to be so bored watching me do this over and over and over, which is exactly why I used to use time lapse. I didn't want you to get bored watching me doing the same thing. But now that I'm not using time lapse anymore, then it really makes me nervous. I don't want to skip anything, but I don't want to bore you to death either. Little bits up in here. I'm putting a ton of these little just little pinpoints of white in places where I didn't put any black.
And I'm not putting any on the flowers, but you could if you wanted to. I feel like if I put them on the flowers, then the flowers are going to the the spider web is going to have to compete with the flowers for, you know, your attention, for the focus. If you're going along with your white and you get it out of control, it, you know, goes outside of a shape or you just feel like it's too intense, just put some black over it. Not a big deal. I think I'm about done. Just going to add a couple more little really, really delicate specks of this white. And then I'm going to call it, call it done. Now, the pencil lines on here, I can take off very easily with a damp brush. However, I need to wait until everything is perfectly dry. So, I'm gonna finish this up. I'm gonna hit everything with my blow dryer really, really well, and then I'm gonna let it sit for maybe an hour or so. And then we'll come back and I will take the black chalk off of here. And I'm going to sign it. And there's your misty autumn sunrise. I hope you enjoyed painting this with me and I look forward to seeing your take on this painting. Make sure that you find me on Instagram. Just search for Painting with Jane and you'll find me. And then make sure to tag me if you post your version because I would love to see it. Thank you to my awesome sponsor, Frederick's Canvas, who provided the excellent canvas that I used in today's video. And thank you for always watching and painting along with me, everyone. I'll see you next time.